All right, guys, we're going to take a look at here. This is part two, okay, of unit four, lesson three. So we're actually doing some exponential functions, like applications, okay? So we're going to take a look at, in the last two questions, part one, we looked at questions where things were growing, okay? For the next two examples, okay, we're going to take a look at things that are um, depreciating or declining, exponential decay, okay? So we're going to take a look at... Um, this first example, which is quite common, right? You can see all sorts of different depreciation questions. From um, the, in this question, it's a it's a computer, which is pretty common. But um, even more common might be a vehicle, right? If you buy a vehicle off the lot, it's often said that it almost loses half of its value as soon as you drive it away, brand new, right? But the same is true for any vehicle that you buy. Um, with a few exceptions of some, maybe some older cars that maybe appreciate instead of depreciate, right? Um, but most vehicles will decline in value over time. Okay, so we're, we're going to take a look at how this works. Okay, so let's take a look at this computer example. Okay, so the same thing's going to happen this time though. Okay, so <clears throat> you're going to look at the question and um, highlight some key things. Okay, so a computer depreciates by 40% per year. Okay, if you bought the computer for eighteen hundred, okay, this year, find out its value in five years time. Okay, so let's go to our trusty writing things out. Okay, so n. Well, first of all, let's take a look at what we're gonna use. Okay, I see an equation that represents um, population decline or depreciation. Okay. In this case, we're looking at depreciation. I'm going to go over here and look here. Okay, this is very similar. It's a, a, a virtually identical to the growth equation with the exception of this minus sign. Okay. So, those are the, that's the equation we're going to use for this question and a car question or whatever you're going to do, or whatever you're interested in what's depreciating. Okay, so we're going to go down here. Okay, so I know my equation is going to be n equals. Uh, and not multiplied by 1 minus r to the power of t. Okay, so then I'm going to go write my knowns. I don't know what n is. That's what I want to know after five years. How much is it going to be worth, right? So that's going to be unknown. And not, I know how much I paid for it. It's $1,800, right? Okay. <clears throat> now, the rate. Remember, this is a tricky part. The rate is 40%. But it can't stay as a percent, it has to go to a decimal. How do I switch percent to a decimal? Well, you do 40 divided by 100, which is 0 0.4. So that's the number you're going to use in your equation. Okay. And then um, the amount of time. How long are you going to own this computer? Or, or you're in this particular question, you're interested in what it's going to be worth after five years. Okay. So T is going to equal five. Okay. So N is equal two, we're going to start plugging things in. 1800 multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.4 to the power of 5. And so n is going to equal to 1800 multiplied by, okay, 1 minus 0 0.4 is going to be 0 0.6 to the power of 5, okay? And then so the next step here is to go to your calculator and type that in. So 0 0.6 to the power of 5. Right, x y to the power of five. Zero point. We can write all four digits down. Okay. Now again, I'll just highlight this. this is I did the math here. That's the number after doing the math. Okay, and then I go back to my calculator, and I just simply multiply this number, which is still sitting there, by eighteen hundred. Okay, and I should get my final answer of what this thing's going to be worth after five years. Okay. So let's go back. I'm going to take that, multiply it by 1800. So it's going to be worth $139 and 97 cents. Right. So therefore the computer OK, 
okay? So obviously, I think this is a very common thing. We, they're always coming out with new computers. And so when you buy something five years down the line, it's basically lost all its value because you can look at um, what advancements they've made with the new models relative to the old ones, right? So a pretty interesting example, right? Like some of you are going to go to college next year, right? Um, or, or anybody could... Um, buy a computer in the next few years and you can this is what happens right now it might not decline by 40 percent per year that might be a lot um or excessive right but generally speaking computers will depreciate over time okay and so you start to see if i wanted to know what four years was i could plug in the four here right if i wanted to know what it was worth next year if you were whatever wanted to sell it after a year okay you could figure out what its value would be okay so let's take a look at this next example. This is a little bit different, still a depreciation question, okay? Um, but it's a different spin on a depreciation question. So our curve is still gonna look something like this, our graph, sorry, right? But with this question, we have this radioactive element radon, right? And it has a half-life of 25 years, okay? So I'm just reading through this and I see the word half-life, okay? Um, or sorry, 25 days, sorry, I misspoke, 25 days. And we're given an initial sample size, okay? So an initial, and um, we'll call it uh, some mass, right? Okay. Um, your job here, part A, is to find <clears throat> what the um, mass is going to be after 20 days, okay? So let's take a look here. Um, we're going to go through, well, let's go back to our thing. Radioactive decay, half-life. You see this? Half-life. If I see the words half-life, I know I'm using this equation. Okay, so let's go back down. So my equation, I know my equation is going to be M equals M naught to the half T divided by H. Okay, and this is just... Very, very similar to what we did in the doubling question. Doubling question, just different variables, right? So for this, I want to know the mass. That's what I want to know. Um, M naught, I know I'm starting with 100, oops. Starting with 150 grams, right? Um, now, here's where things get interesting, okay? Obviously, T is still going to be T, right? But we see two different numbers here. I see 25 days and I see 20 days, right? And so the trick with this is, how do I know which one's which, right? Well, the half-life of 25 days, half-life, is going to be H. H is going to equal 25 because I see half-life. Whereas T, T is the actual time value that um, you're interested in, right? So how many grams would be left after 20 days, right? 20. Okay, so then you just go through the motions of just plugging these things in. Okay, the so M naught is going to be 150 multiplied by the one half, and then we're to the exponent of 20 divided by 25. Okay, now twenty divided by twenty-five is gonna be zero point eight. Okay, so we'll go back. You need to put 0 0.8 as the exponent, okay? And now you're gonna go, okay, well, I'm just gonna do the math on this. I'm gonna go 0 0.5 raised to the exponent of 0 0.8. That's what I'm gonna do. 0 0.5 to the exponent, x, like the xy, to 0 0.8 is 0 0.574. So m, oops. M is equal to 150 multiplied by 0 0.874. Make sure that's right. 574. It's a good thing I checked. Okay. And then you just do the math. Like, again, that's the number from the red math that I did. Okay. So M is equal to that number multiplied by 150. 86.15. OK, 
Okay, so then you could say, therefore, after 20 days, 86.15 grams of radon still exists. Okay. Now, let's take a look at part B here. I want to know, okay, under this is, I'm just subtly changing what's happening here, okay? And, and this is really getting at it as an exercise to emphasize the importance of this, the writing these knowns and unknowns. This is the key to the whole question, right? Key, okay? If you can do this, it's just a plug and, it's plug and chug as they say, right? You just plug things in and just go from there, okay? So part B is just a different kind of question. Okay, it's um, just asking you for a different piece of information. Same work. Okay, so it's the same equation. I'm still dealing with the same radon half life, except this time I've changed M naught is going to be 50. Right? And then, oops, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. So this is the importance of doing this. <clears throat> what would have been the initial amount? So what would have been the initial amount? Stop reading. So M equals unknown. M naught, sorry. Because M naught is the initial amount. Okay. If 50 grams remained after 20 days. T equals 20, H equals 25 still. So you see how like relative to this equation, this question over here, I've changed what I'm looking for. You see how M naught is, is not filled in this time, M is, right? So you just use the same equation, M equals M naught multiplied by a half T over H. M in this question is now 50. M naught is still M naught. That's what I'm looking to solve for. One half and then 20 divided by 25. So then I got to go, okay, I'm going to do the math on the exponent and the base. Okay, so I got to do the math on this, which I already know is being this over here, 0 0.574. Okay, and then this is just a linear equation now. Now I'm able to isolate for M naught by dividing both sides by 0 0.574. Okay, and so M naught is going to equal 50 divided by 0 0.574. And then you can go to your calculator and go, okay, 50, 50 divided by 0 0.574, 87.1. Okay, and so in, under these circumstances, the initial amount, of radon would have been 87.1 grams, okay? Now, <clears throat> one last question, okay? And then you guys are good to go and I'll give you some homework questions and it's honestly not any harder than what I've shown you here. You're just gonna write down your notes and then do the work on it, okay? So let's take a look at this example. Okay, so last one. So the number of ants in a colony doubles every month. Okay, if there are now 600 ants, what would be the population after five months? Okay, so let's take a look at n is equal to, okay, it's doubling. So I'm going to go to the doubling equation. Okay, 
So it's n is equal to n naught multiplied by 2 to the t over d. Okay, make sure that's right. There you go. It's right here. The doubling equation. Okay. So <clears throat> let's write down our knowns and unknowns. So it's doubling every month. Okay. There are now 600 ants. So n naught equals 600. Okay. And then what will be the population after five months? T will equal five. And the doubling, it's doubling every month. Okay. So that means every month that passes, you're going to have double what you had before. So the D value is one because it's every month is one. And so the actual, what we're trying to find is N. So let's just do the math. N equals 600, two, and then it's five divided by one, which is just five. So it's N equals 600 times two to the power of five. Okay. And then we'll go to our calculator and we can do two to the power of five is 32. We go back n is equal to 600 multiplied by oops, 32, right? And I, this is just from the math here, two to the power of five is 32. And then I can just go back to my calculator and say, okay, I need to do 32 times 600, the initial population. Well, there you go. Okay, so after five months, the new population is going to be 19,200. The ant population, okay. That's it, okay? Hopefully you find this a little bit easier, okay? It, it's, uh, honestly, if, if you do this every single time, you write down your knowns and unknowns and then pick the appropriate equation from the list, you're good to go, okay? It's no harder than this. You're able to answer all sorts of interesting things. And we're gonna take this, this is gonna be very similar to what we do